huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. What is going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro and welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial, I'm going to show you a really cool masking slash curtain transition effect that you guys can do uh, with one of your videos uh, for your next project. If you guys want to use this in your next project, it would look so, so cool. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people have already made this, uh, this kind of transition, but I have not seen one single video done in Final Cut Pro 10. So I'm going to push play and what you're going to see is some green screen of my hands and just kind of like opening uh, the screen here and then it just transitions onto the next screen and, and it's super super easy and you don't need any plugins you don't need any special software to do this you can do this all in Final Cut Pro 10 what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into uh, my video here and I'm gonna do this one here I'm gonna drag uh, actually I'm gonna drag this one here first and all of these videos are royalty free by the way so I'm gonna drag this one here as a as our beginning clip and then this one as our uh, second clip okay so once you have both of your videos in the timeline I'm gonna move the, the spacer so you guys can see the timeline a little bit more so we're gonna have the video here playing and then right here I want the uh, my hands to show now in order for this to actually work you will need some green screen if you have an actual green screen then that's perfect um, but if you have like a green map uh, like a one, one of those posters like, like a green poster then that would work too so use whatever you guys need to um, however I'm gonna use this piece here and I and it took me a couple of times to do this so it looks kind of funny it looks like I'm swimming uh, what you want to do is you just pretty much want to pretend like you're opening like something in the middle right there and then once you find your your favorite shot click and drag this into the timeline just like so and once you do that it's gonna look like this and I'm going to mute the audio from that. So it's going to look like this if I push play. It's just going to be um, my hands showing on this green screen. Once you have done that, you're going to select the green screen. We're going to go on to the effects and we're going to go down to the keying. So if we go down to keying, we're going to drag the keyer directly on top of this green screen. And this will get rid of the green screen for you. Now, if we go back and I push play, you're going to see some of this, um, some of these artifacts around the corners. That's what happens when you don't have even lighting. All right. So once you guys go into the inspector window, you want to click on the sample color option here and you're going to sample whatever artifacts are in the video. So in this case, this top left, I'm going to click and drag until you can't really see it anymore. And if there's another one here, click on this again and just drag this over into the corner like that. You can do that for every corner if you wish. Uh, in, in case there's some weird artifacts. You can also adjust these as well. So now if I go back and I push play, you're not gonna have those weird artifacts uh, going on. So once you have this going on, you're gonna notice that my watch here is see-through. So in order to fix that, you can just go where it says fill holes and just increase this to the right a little bit until you can't, uh, until it fills in those holes. Like Perfect, so now we have our green screen technically uh, keyed out. Once we're at this point, what we want to do you want to drag this clip on the bottom like this, okay? We're gonna go into the effects, we're gonna go into masks, we're gonna go to draw mask, and we're gonna drag that directly on top of this clip here. So once you guys are at this point, we're gonna zoom out a little bit. So we're gonna go to around uh, 50%, and then we're gonna click in the middle, hold down shift to make a straight line, and then just uh, make a selection around the edges like so. So now you have masked out everything but this, okay? So this is the only thing that's gonna be visible. Now what you want to do now is you want to hold down Alt or Option, click and drag upwards, and this will make an exact copy of that uh, layer so you don't have to add another draw mask, which saves you a couple of steps. So once you guys are here, all you're going to do is instead of, because it's pretty much replicated, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this one here, and we're going to drag it to the right. Okay, so this will reveal the right side. So now we have a right side and a left side. From this point, all you got to do is click on either clip. I'm just going to do the, the bottom one for now. And I'm going to move uh, pretty much right here is where I want it to start. Well, actually, I'm going to skim through the video first. So right as my both of my hands are touching, I guess, in the middle or when, once I start pulling away, which is around here, what I want to do from this point is right here, I like to add a, what's called a marker. So press M on your keyboard to add a marker so that way you know where a keyframe starts. You can, of course, right click on the video, go into show video uh, show video animation, and you can see the uh, your points here as well. Personally, I don't like doing that because you'll have a really, a really cluttered timeline, so I'm gonna hide that for now. 
but this is just a simple way of doing it. So I'm gonna press M just to add a marker so you know where things are. So once you're at this point, you're gonna have a middle line. We haven't added any keyframes. So this is where we're gonna add our keyframe. So we're gonna go into the draw mask here in the inspector window. And then we're gonna go into the control points and click this plus icon, which looks like a diamond. So click on this button, and this will allow you to add your first keyframe where you, where you can then animate it, okay? Skip a couple of frames right here, and then click in the middle right here on this line, just pretty much click the line and move it to the left here. So it's around your hand like this. So now if we go back, it's gonna animate just like so, okay? So once we're at this point, we're gonna move it a couple of frames more over to the right. We're gonna drag this to the left. So it follows my hand, of course. I'm gonna move it a couple of frames more. We don't want it to go all out at once. This is not gonna look realistic, so I'm gonna drag this out a little bit. And then once this my hand goes out, I'm gonna move this all the way out. So now if I go back and I push play, it's gonna look something like this, okay? Now, it doesn't really look realistic because we don't have a, uh, like a feather effect going on. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the feather and we're gonna increase this all the way to around 77 or something. So if I go back and I push play, it's gonna look a little bit more smooth. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the top clip and do the same exact thing. So we're gonna to go to the draw mask, we're gonna go into the control points and we're gonna click on the plus icon right here that looks like a diamond to add your first keyframe right here wherever you're gonna start pulling away. And then you're gonna move the time, the time head a couple of frames to the right like so. Click on the draw mask again if, uh, if you don't have the red line selected and then click in between these two points so you can click uh, on the line and just drag it all the way to here. So now if we go back, you're gonna see that it's gonna animate and we're gonna move a little bit more to the right like so. Drag the, um, whoops, drag this here again. And we're gonna move this a couple of frames more around uh, here. And I'm gonna click and drag with this over here like so. And I'm gonna move this all the way until it, I guess it goes out of the frame. So now if I go back and I push play, it's gonna look something like that which looks super cool. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another feather to this. So we're gonna click on here, type in 77 to add the same uh, feather as the other clip. So now if I go back and I push play, it's gonna look something like this, nice and smooth, sweet. So once you guys have that set and done, all you gotta do is I'm going to select, uh, I'm actually going to cut where it starts. So I'm gonna split the video by pressing B on the keyboard to uh, open the blade tool and then you're gonna cut that. And then once this ends, which is towards this end piece here, I'm gonna also trim those or cut it. Then I'm gonna select both of these pieces, which is our pretty much our animated uh, parts. We're gonna hold down uh, option G uh, to make a compounds clip. I'm gonna name this split, press enter, and now you're gonna have this split uh, going on. What I like to do from this point is I like to add a little bit like a nicer effect. So I'm gonna go into the effects, I'm gonna go into the blur, and then I'm gonna go onto prism, and I'm gonna drag that directly onto this compounds clip. So once you do that, we're gonna go into the amount here, and you can increase this if you wish. You can decrease this, I'm gonna increase it a little bit, so it's you know a little bit dramatic. You can also change the angle if you want, I'm gonna leave it how it is. Now from this point, I'm going to go into the uh, stylize. I'm gonna go down to uh, let's see, I think it's called like, uh, or distort. I think it's in distortion. Uh, I'm gonna do underwater and I'm gonna drag that there. And this just allows you to kind of create like a, kind of like a swirl effect going on. Uh, so I'm going to change the refraction here to something like so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave the speed, I'm gonna change the size to around here. So now if I go back and I push play, it just makes it look a little, I don't know, a little bit more organic, if, if that makes sense. So it's not so flat and boring. It just kind of gives it a little bit more movement. Called, I think it's called light and it's gonna be called spot. I'm gonna drag that directly onto this clip. And this kind of changes the, the overall color of that particular clip that you've added it to. So if we're to disable this, you can see the before and after. So this is a before and after. What the spot does, it pretty much darkens everything. It kind of color grades it for you and then it leaves everything but this inner circle unaffected. So you can increase this to kind of create some emphasis in the transition. So if I were to go back and I push play, it's just gonna look something like that. But keep in mind if you do this and you want to color grade your video in the end, it's gonna affect it so it might look a little bit darker. Select everything, I'm gonna hold down Option G again. I'm gonna name this, uh, I'm gonna name this final. And then what I like to do then is I like to add a LUT just to finish everything off so it looks a little bit nicer. 
So I'm going to go into the, uh, let's see, it's called color. And then we're going to go into custom LUT and drag that onto that clip. And then we're going to change this to the, I guess we can do Aspen. That one looks pretty cool. Build it, make it, show it, sell it. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. Squarespace has award-winning templates so you can build your online presence easier. Whether you're a chef or a filmmaker, Squarespace has amazing 24-7 customer support via live chat and email in case you ever need help. Use the offer code KINGTUTSPRO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I'll catch you guys on my next video. 